The government doesn't want to admit that it killed its own people. Tonight, the NBC4i team reveals the dangerous secrets kept behind this fence in a place called Area 4. I just want the truth out there. A terrible nuclear accident, radioactive gases leaked over Los Angeles, and a government cover-up. The big question tonight, did the toxic fallout cause people, including children, to get sick and die? That nuclear accident happened a long time ago, 1959, one of the worst in U.S. history, just 35 miles from downtown L.A. Tonight, Joel Grover and his team have uncovered proof 56 years later that the fallout from this accident is even worse than the government has ever admitted. Joel is here right now with the I-Team's year-long investigation. Joel. Well, Colleen, you might be wondering why we should care about a nuclear accident that happened more than half a century ago. Because, as you're about to see, thousands of people in the San Fernando and Simi Valleys have been secretly exposed to dangerous radioactive fallout. And there's evidence if you live close to the hot zone, you could still be exposed or even get sick. Behind this fence, the government has kept a secret. A secret this mother thinks killed her son. There is no getting over the death of your child. A secret this woman thinks is killing her sisters. They don't care if we live or die. A secret this man who worked behind the fence has been keeping for decades. It's been eating me alive is what it amounts to. It was the dawn of the nuclear era. More towns may eventually become atomic cities. And hidden in the hills above the growing San Fernando and Simi Valleys, the Atomic Energy Commission oversaw the building of the Santa Susana Field Lab, 2,800 acres for testing rockets, and at the lab's Area 4, experimental nuclear reactors. The others I worked with, they're dead and gone. 76 year old John Pace worked behind the controls at Area 4's largest reactor. On July 13, 1959, he says something went terribly wrong. Did the reactor almost blow up that night? Yes. How serious would that have been? It would have been just like the Chernobyl reactor blowing up. A government press release said simply there had been a minor fuel element failure at the reactor and there had been no release of radioactive materials to the environment. Did the government lie to the public? Yes, they did. And that's one of the reasons I'm here. Uh, what they've written in that report is not even close to what actually happened. Our Unit 4 can report on a nuclear accident that happened very near Los Angeles. 20 years later, NBC4 broke the news for the first time that there had been a partial nuclear meltdown at Area 4 back in 59. There was no large-scale exposure to nuclear radi radiation. But John Pace says that's not true. Dangerous radioactive materials were put right out into the air. Yeah, right out into the air, yes. Pace says the accident unleashed a massive amount of radiation inside the reactor, 300 times the permissible concentration, according to this now declassified document we obtained. The radiation in that building got so high it went clear off the scale. Pace says workers were told to open the exhaust stacks and let massive amounts of radiation out into the sky. How did the workers feel when this stuff was being released into the air? They felt terrible and they had to, and, and let it out over their own families. Then while fixing the damaged reactor, he says workers were told to open these doors day after day for weeks to release more radioactive gases into the air. Where did the radiation go when you opened the door? San Fernando Valley, Simi Valley over this way. You got Chatsworth over here. Chatsworth, downwind of Area 4, is where Arlene Matthews' family lived. There's no expressing the loss of a son. Matthews lost her son Bobby, a Chatsworth High track star, to glioblastoma, a rare brain cancer linked to radiation exposure. Every day his team ran across these hills to the Santa Susana Field Lab, and he's gone. How many think your cancers or cancers in your family are related to Santa Susana? I do. For our investigation, the I-Team collected and combed through more than 15,000 pages of documents, which reveal what the government has yet to publicly admit, that there were secret releases of radiation from Area 4 that might have caused many cases of cancer. Were the workers allowed to tell their wives, their families, what was going on? No, they were not. 
They were sworn in secrecy. But buried in the archives of NASA, which used part of the field lab, we found this document, which confirms the 1959 meltdown led to a release of radioactive contaminants. And in the files of the US EPA, we found interviews with former Santa Susana workers who we tracked down, like Dan Parks. Did you witness releases of radioactive gas? Certainly. Park's job was to monitor radiation in Area 4 in the 1960s, and he says he frequently saw workers release dangerous radiation into the air from three different reactors. It was supposed to be a secret. And he says workers would often dispose of barrels of radioactive waste from reactors by taking them out to what were called the burn pits. And they would shoot it with this high-powered rifle. It was a volatile explosion beyond belief. Fire smoke. If the wind was blowing to the valley, it would blow it in the valley. And he says that radioactive smoke blew right onto workers like Ralph Powell, an Area 4 security officer. I saw the clouds of smoke engulfing my friends that are dying now. You fear that you brought radiation home? Yes. I was told that maybe I tracked in some radiation. I suspect it caused the death of my son. I've never got that out of my mind. To this very day, radiation and toxic chemicals have been found in the ground and water of Area 4. The I-Team obtained these soil tests done by the U.S. EPA, which found 423 hotspots around Area 4, places contaminated with high levels of radiation. And we found documents that show the radiation has moved off-site. It's been found in the dirt in neighborhoods to the south, in neighborhoods to the northeast, and in neighborhoods to the north in Simi Valley, including at the Brandeis Bardeen Institute, a place where 30,000 kids have gone to summer camp, including me when I was 11 years old. If the wind is blowing and carrying radiation from Santa Susana, it doesn't stop because there's a fence. Dr. Robert Dodge sits on the board of the Nobel Prize winning nonprofit Physicians for Social Responsibility, which studies the effects of radiation. There's absolutely a link to radiation and cancer. The I-Team spoke with dozens of families. I want an answer to why I have this cancer. Who grew up in the shadows of Area 4, like the Seltzer sisters who grew up nearby in Canoga Park. My cancer's back and it's not a spread. And all three have battled cancer, including Catherine. I've had, I don't know how many cancers. You played in the water that ran off Santa Susana? I played in the water, I swam in the water, I drank the water. The water and the ground, the soil, uh, can get contaminated and it can, uh, it can move uh, out of the site and into areas where people live. The CDC commissioned Dr. Hal Morgenstern, an epidemiologist, to study cancer rates near Santa Susana. His team found that people living within two miles of the site had a 60% higher rate of certain cancers. There's some provocative evidence, uh, it's like circumstantial evidence, suggesting that there, there might be a connection. People are continuing to die as we sit here. These people want the government to finally admit what happened behind this fence, and they want a full cleanup of the toxic contamination for the sake of future generations. See that this is done immediately before more lives are lost. We had a lot of questions for the federal agency in charge of the nuclear reactors at Area 4, the U.S. Department of Energy, like why the government still hasn't publicly admitted that radiation was released into the air over L.A. for years. The Energy Department said no one would be available to talk to us for this story. Okay. Mr. Jones, I'm Joel Grover with Channel 4. Nice to meet you. We've been trying to talk to so we showed up at a public meeting to try and talk to the Energy Department's project manager over the Santa Susana lab, John Jones. Will anyone from your agency talk to us at all? My public people have talked to you. I've said all I'm going to say. You've said nothing. Thank you for your time. And that was his final word. And one final note about the radiation found at the Brandeis Bardeen Institute, home of Camp Alanim, where so many kids have gone to summer camp. Brandeis told us it's been routinely doing soil and water testing on its land, and the results show the site is safe. We asked to see those soil and water tests, and Brandeis said no.